welcome to this talk uh, titled International Growth for Mobile Games um, that focuses on how to increase your footprint across markets. Uh, my name is Stefano Pigliafreddo. I'm an international growth consultant at Google, focusing on apps in uh, Central and Southern Europe. You, you might ask yourself, why should we care about international growth and what about increasing our international footprint? Talking about increasing your international footprint, uh, as many of you uh, probably are already in many markets, but there's always an opportunity to grow your business by looking at additional markets or to grow your share of the existing markets in which you are currently. And why is it important? Very straightforward. Um, it does increase your sales and profit if you expand your addressable market. And uh, very important at this point uh, in time is the ability to diversify your risk and to be exposed to positive trends. So imagine that you are in uh, multiple countries. If there is an uptick in one specific country, um, you can take advantage uh, and you can reap the benefits of that uh, uplift in uh, demand and um, installs in that specific country, but only if you're present there. So being uh, well um, covering uh, of the different uh, geographies in the world does help with uh, risk diversification and exposure to positive uh, trends and increases in demands. So let's make it practical and uh, let's try to have uh, a structured uh, approach to internationalization. This is one of the goals of this talk is to uh, share with you how we approach internationalization at Google and how we um, suggest that you can approach it in the same in the same fashion. Here I teamed it in a gaming uh, friendly way. Um, so if we if we think about going into this journey, it's like embarking on an epic adventure. So you start by picking your quest get your equipment ready while you start playing and you keep an eye on the score to make sure that everything is going according to your desires. And then you uh, repeat and you continue leveling up, which is always uh, the, the aim of the, of the games, to keep going up and improving. And the same for your business, if we translate it into um, uh, practical terms, what we mean with Picking your quest is starting to understand where to go and especially prioritizing. Obviously, it's a game of prioritization and international expansion. We need to make sure to start with the um, most significant and most rewarding geographies at first and then to scale. And how do we understand which, uh, which are those? We start with demand analysis, and then we do the prioritization exercise itself. Uh, and also there are other elements to take into consideration when you do a, a prioritization exercise such as compliance. Um, so this is the first step. If we move to the equipment um, part, which actually means having all your operational uh, levers in place. So translations, localization efforts, uh, varied uh, resources that you need to pull into the actual um, operative uh, part of your plan and then um, potentially reaching out to third parties and agencies. That's something that we're gonna cover as well. And we're ready to go, we start playing and we want to keep an eye on, on the score. So very briefly, we're gonna talk about performance tracking and the importance of it to always keep it front and center. And then we're gonna uh, finally close with the scaling to new markets, which is an important part of uh, then repeating it and reaping the benefits of the experience that you gain by um, starting to internationalize. So we start with the selection of your quest. Once again, this is mainly centered around market um, demand analysis and prioritization. And it's all about finding the right opportunities for your business. To make it practical, how we can help from Google side, there is a tool that is very useful that is called Market Finder. What Market Finder does, it helps you um, start on your market research journey. So you can access it from g.co slash Market Finder. It's a very powerful tool. You can access it literally right now by going to the URL and you will be presented with uh, this view. What is great is that 
um, is now available at an app specific view. So you have app specific metrics, which is obviously what interests you um, at the moment. And um, yeah, you can opt in for that specific view simply by adding your uh, URL for your own app, uh, taking it from either source and filling it back into the, the tool. Here I'm taking as an example, Google Keep, not to put everyone on the spot, um, just as a initial example, but uh, let's take that URL. It will be the same for a gaming app. You will be presented with your categories. In this case, we have productivity. In, in your case, you will have action games, simulation games, um, endless runner, um, stuff like that. So you can tweak the category that you're analyzing. That's very important because obviously it changes the data and um, you can continue. But you can see that the tool itself does a pretty good job. In this case, it detects uh, productivity right away. And then the suggestions start to appear um, almost magical, super fast. Uh, you, um, you can then, according to the chosen category, see the top three markets that are suggested. It might be markets in which you're already uh, present at the moment. Uh, fear not. What you can do is, is then scroll down and see actually a ranked, a full ranking of the most promising countries. And what is great, you can really make this tool yours and by starting to select uh, three of them, you start confirming the three markets that you want to deep dive on, and you will find um, more in-depth insights as we're gonna see uh, in this view. So basically you have your existing market, you have these three potential markets that you want to go to, and you can compare insights to find uh, the right opportunities and to, to see how different it is from the market you are mainly used to, maybe your existing market or another export market that you know very well, and then uh, starting to understand what um, you can expect from the new ones. So for example, uh, very useful from the um, app-specific point of view, for example, the split of Android and iOS usage. What you can expect, for example, I didn't know that India has around 94% of Android usage. This is Germany that has 70%. That's quite a difference. And this can be useful information when you then choose your priorities for your team. Um, you can find it all year comparing to each other, uh, to each market, to another, um, right into the tool. When we take a step back, you see also there are other views. I'm not going to go into details in this specific presentation, but basically you have an overview on the country itself, if, um, profiles of the country, so GDP and other um, useful general information on the country to try to get a feeling for it before deep diving. And then also uh, some tips on purchase behavior. Logistic is really not um, probably the most important part for you. Um, so you can focus on this first uh, tabs. Sounds good, hopefully, but how do you turn it into action? You might be wondering. So one of the approaches that we recommend is, is a scorecard approach. That's what we use ourselves uh, day in and day out as international growth consultants. And this really is focused, as, uh, from, is focused to go from the, the data to the actual prioritization and actionable um, delivery of the market expansion. So you start with all of the data that we saw uh, before and you will start filling in. It can simply be um, a simple spreadsheet and then you start filling in with the data that we um, got from the full ranking of the markets that you're interested in. And you can start adding uh, data points such as market size, the total VIP revenue, and all the information that we saw before. Your final goal for this um, tool that you're creating basically is to have a ranking and this ranking will inform the priorities of your uh, international expansion. To that, uh, I suggest to also add a competition analysis. So you want to make sure that you add to your scorecard a simple assessment of the competitive lands landscape. So if you have like top 10 countries that look good in terms of addressable market, you also want to add a layer of the competition there. So is there a big established player? Are there many und undiversified players? Is there no one in your specific gaming category? Or is, is there someone that is really well known in other markets, but it's not well known in that market, then you have a chance to maybe um, get a stronger footprint in there. 
all the information that you can try to quantify and transform into, you, you can live in a qualitative uh, side with notes, but also in a quantitative um, fashion. So you can feed it back into your scorecard and the ranking system. And one trick to check the uh, different um, presence of your, maybe your competitors or also yourself in the different markets is to actually simply go to the URL of the Play Store and change the ending. So you see here, um, the original URL that we got for the US was uh, EN English and US for the United States. And then we change it to Japanese and Japan to check the presence of this app for the Japanese market. Another important uh, topic is tax and legal. You're not gonna cover it into this presentation, but it should be front and center, very important uh, part of your expansion journey. That obviously to do have um, an impact on your uh, final results, and you should de definitely look into that with your team. So we go back to the market prioritization approach. Um, We've taken all of this data here for simplicity. Uh, I just added the competition um, column. Um, but basically what you will do, you, you can have many, many columns, but then you have to arrive at a score that is only from the ranking. And in this case, you will use different weights. So for your market, for example, sorry, for your um, business, it might be very important, the total addressable market size, and you give um, higher weight, or for example, you can um, be very interested in lack of competition and you give a higher weight to the competition score that you define by your own analysis. And all of this creates a scoring system that ultimately you will use to rank the countries. And then you have this very nice data-driven approach to market prioritization. You can add even other uh, company-specific um, elements to aid your decision. And um, there you you have a nice um, plan for your international expansion. So great, we picked our quest and we know where we want to go. We need to get the equipment ready, ready to play. So basically, this means that uh, being ready for the go-to-market strategy and all the operational levers must be in place before you can roll out, for example, advertising or just your launch in general. Um, so this would be about translation, about localizing, about um, other resources that need to be pulled into place at the right moment when it comes to launching a new market, and then also third parties. If we start with translations, here again, you can go to Market Finder and you can find very useful tips and resources. Um, it will be under the Plan Your Operations section that you can find right from the navigation bar. Um, once again, the link is g.co slash Market Finder. And the content will be fairly easy to find, as I said. For example, you can find information on um, third-party translation services uh, if you don't want to localize, in, uh, sorry, uh, translate internally. Um, and uh, Google's own translation service that is embedded in the developer console of the Play Store. And even if you don't uh, maybe intend to use, um, still gives you very interesting information that you can feed back into your scorecard even. Uh, to inform your go-to-market strategy. So we're taking a non-gaming example here, but if you want to, for example, cover 53% uh, of installs in the, in the health and fitness category, you can just do that with English and Spanish. So you can imagine how useful it would be to know the weight of the different countries in your own uh, gaming category. If we go beyond translation, we have the concept of localization. So localization me means um, trying to appeal to the local customer as much as possible, try to speak their language, not only in terms of actual language, but also habits and best practices when it comes to, um, for example, writing currencies and other things that we're going to see in a minute. But um, to look for help for this specific part, we have um, on Market Finder, always under the operational side of the website, the um, localized for different countries view, where you have a country by country uh, guide for each, um, for each country, in fact. So examples of information that you can actually use and apply to your the development of your game um, 
there are, for example, different numerical systems. So if you go to India, they don't use the uh, Western numerical system. You see in here, there are units for thousands, for hundreds of thousands and tens of millions, which is a concept that is different in Western um, numerical systems. Or you can take a look at the currency. So for example, if you go to the UK with your game, you want to make sure uh, that you write uh, the prices in British pounds in the correct way. So it comes uh, with uh, putting the sign, for example, before then uh, the actual number for the currency, uh, not using commas, stuff like that. And it really can make a difference in creating trust with the uh, customers there. Um, just following the best practices and talking in the way they will expect you to talk to them. And there is much more waiting for you, as you see here in the slide. Um, obviously, it's not only about localization and translation, but you also have to have an international strategy. You have to recruit, uh, if necessary, in different countries. You have to take care of tax and legal, as we saw before, and also on the part of payments, if you have payments transactions. Um, all that information is uh, under the planning operation side of uh, Market Finder. So I once again, encourage you to check those resources, resources which are great. Uh, you might also want to have local help. That uh, is a really good way to grow fast and to uh, speed speed up your, um, your expansion. So you can do that with recommended agencies. So we have uh, some contacts on the um, Market Finder tool. As you can see here, you can explore it uh, on your own time. Okay, so we're in full playing mode. And we want to keep an eye on the score. So what we uh, want to make sure to do um, is to have uh, the proper measurement in place. So it's often top of mind measurement, measurement for mobile uh, game developers, which is great. Um, is great it's kind of a default mindset that is already there just uh, a reminder to really incorporate also in the international uh, side of things from the get-go because it really uh, helps your um, decision making process to have high quality data from the beginning when you start expanding in a new market and then you will simply repeat and continue and start leveling up the good thing is that when you scale to new markets and you learn how to do it efficiently and fast. So for example, you have all of this information that you collected from your scorecard, for example, that you can use to define the next priorities. You can um, translate rapidly campaigns on assets, given all the um, tips that we saw. You can follow the operational best practice that we saw um, apart from translation on the other side of um, the operational levers, and you know where to find them. So obviously, it becomes an easier journey as you go along. And now to the bonus level, I wanted to include a, a small case study um, to give you a bit of inspiration. So this is the outfit selling case and how they transform from a small app developer to an entertainment company. They set on a quest to drive downloads of new products in new markets. And they wanted to monetize the app and stimulate revenue growth and also encourage uh, engagement with the new and existing products. And they achieved these results, which I think are remarkable. 2.5 billion downloads and more than 250 million active users. This is a case study of 2015, if I'm not mistaken, um, but just a staggering growth of the revenue of over 1,000%. I think um, something that can inspire everyone. For the sake of time, we're not going to go through the case itself, but you can read it on Think with Google if you just search at with seven transformation for a small app developer, for example, it will uh, pop right up. And then finally, uh, closing with a quote. So the founder said, Google plays a big role because in certain territories without Google, we cannot imagine our distribution. So the idea with this talk is to um, share a bit with you all of the resources that are available. So also you can benefit from um, um, this information that is there is publicly available on once again Market Finder um, and start your international quest. And you can start it today. So what's next? It's game on basically. We have 
three takeaways that I would like you to, um, to get from this talk. One is that you can be a voice for international growth within your organization. You can make a tangible impact. You can, um, it's very measurable, um, the benefit to the business that you can add by expanding the market size, uh, sorry, the addressable market, um, ultimately, of your games. So um, if, you, if this interests you, uh, think about how you can do it within your own organization and push with the resources that we saw. The second part is about thinking through the internationalization uh, project. Since it can um, unlock these great opportunities that can really uh, make it possible to achieve this business, the business goals say you set to have, um, think it through, um, plan it in the right way, and then it becomes a very uh, achievable journey. Um, once again, the market scorecard approach uh, is one of the approaches that we use um, day in and day out, and I really recommend it. And then if you're thinking of growing internationally, um, this probably is the underlying theme uh, throughout the, the, the talk, is that there is a wealth of resources that we saw from Google. Um, make sure to leverage them. They're there, they're free, and they're really helpful for you. They're um, built with you in mind and to help your growth. And that will be the end of the uh, talk itself. Um, I hope you find it useful. Uh, and I'll open it up to questions, so the Q and A's. Um, please share what's on your mind, and I'll be here to answer to it. Thank you very much. I think it's time for Q and A session now. Я приглашаю активнее задавать вопросы. Доклад очень интересный. Я думаю. The report is very interesting. Задавайте свои вопросы на вкладочке Q&A. Ask your question in the Q&A tab, and I will read them. So, firstly, to talk about, I think let's start from how coronavirus did affect for different markets from for different territories. For example. Uh, where it was um, the best, uh, where it uh, where the uh, most huge changes uh, in revenue on which markets uh, on Middle East or uh, Europe or in America. Yeah, um, I don't know if I can share the exact figures, but uh, obviously. Um, by spending more time inside, there's obviously more time that goes into gaming and uh, um, people are uh, finding that time um, like spent enjoyably uh, in uh, mobile gaming. So obviously there was um, an uptick in interest as we, as we said for, for gaming. And uh, that is one of um, the, across the board, I would say. And uh, yeah, that's why it's, uh, a good time to think about being in more territories, as I said at the beginning of the conversation of the presentation. Uh, if you are present in multiple territories, you can benefit uh, from any increase in demand. So imagine if a certain area sees increasing demand for any reason, um, you will be exposed to it, and you can, uh, let's say, um, uh, serve the the customers and uh, have the chance to speak to them in the moment in which you're looking for uh, games like the ones they, uh, uh, as a provider you will uh, provide. Um, so yes, just in general, not a specific country, but being diversified, it helps you wherever there is an uptick uh, to take advantage of that. I, I know that is uh, maybe is a different take to your question, but it, it's also a fluid situation and it changes from month to month. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, it's uh, exactly what I wanted to know. Uh, so, uh, for, for example, uh, just uh, a few days ago, uh, I have received uh, some uh, Google promo email, uh, which told uh, about uh, different increasing of revenue uh, in different locations, uh, depending from different ages of players. Uh, so I think uh, which is the best uh, result, uh, for example, 
for upcoming Christmas uh, days, uh, for uh, upcoming Christmas uh, seasons. I think there were uh, a lot of tips uh, what should uh, we as developers do to increase the revenue uh, because it um, will be more spare time uh, at Christmas. But from you uh, as an expert, what should uh, developers do with their apps to make uh, their revenue and the, uh, and the feedback from the localizations the best during the Christmas? Because we know uh, not all countries uh, celebrate Christmas. For example, uh, some countries in Asia and Middle East do not have uh, some holidays, some huge holidays for that. And should we do some additional steps for countries which do not celebrate some kind of holidays? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it's quite easy to, um, to, to search online for the uh, holidays that are celebrated in the different countries. One other resource is the um, country guides that I have uh, added to the presentation. I mentioned in the presentation that are available with, uh, on Think with Google. One of the examples that is made uh, is not properly on Christmas, but the fact that uh, Thanksgiving is not celebrated, for example, in the UK. And sometimes there are uh, developers that mistake and promote uh, Thanksgiving related content in the UK, which obviously doesn't land in the proper way. So for Christmas, that has been historically um, like a seasonal uh, um, uptick for, for demand. Uh, my suggestions, uh, suggestions are to first uh, be prepared in advance to take advantage of that. Uh, if you uh, can and, and you saw maybe in the, in the past um, benefit from having like specifically a theme related um, content in terms of uh, speaking to the Christmas season and the holiday season, uh, that's, that's great. And to choose the country the countries, um, well, you can think about macro regions, as you said, Europe, North America, usually big on the uh, Christmas season, uh, APEC a bit uh, less, um, but um, yeah, I, I would suggest uh, once again with the, um, the approach of a, a scorecard, if you have the different countries uh, taking a, a vision of the region, that is the first way to filter out good regions and regions that are maybe less affected by that, um, and then try to mark the most important ones so according to your internal data uh, as a business. If you have historical data, otherwise uh, independent research will be the best. Okay, thank you very much.